Hi students and welcome to Year 11 Biology in Module 2, Organisation of Living Things. This is video number 17 and we're going to have a quick look at some of the macroscopic transport systems in animals. Our specific learning outcome is for students to investigate transport systems in animals and plants by comparing structures and components using physical and digital models, including but not limited to macroscopic structures in animals. Now we're going to be looking at transport components. And as we are dealing with the macroscopic level first, we need to look at the three key components of our cardiovascular system. And that is the pump that drives all of the fluid around, which is the heart. And hopefully you'll have the opportunity to dissect a heart or at least have a look at a model of a heart in order to understand the different components that make up our hearts and also some of the differences between human hearts and the hearts of some other animals. The second thing is the blood vessels. And again, there are three types of blood vessels. So we look at arteries and veins. They can be seen at a macro level, a little bit more difficult to see the capillaries, but at least you get a chance to have an idea of the pipes through which that fluid is flowing. And the fluid medium itself is blood. And again, we can see blood, but we can't necessarily see the components in blood, the red blood cells, the white blood cells, the platelets, and the plasma, as well as any of the other chemical substances that are traveling through the blood. So when we look at the human heart, we're looking at a four-chambered pump, and that isn't the same as all other organisms. Some of them have two or three chambers, but we have four, two atria and two ventricles. So the two ventricles are the pumping chambers, and when you look at a dissection of a heart, you find that if you look at the walls of these, very thick muscular walls, especially the left ventricle, because that's going to be the one that's going to pump the blood up through the aorta and out into all of the other areas of the body, particularly the head. And the reason that the head's important, other than the fact that it contains our brains, is also that it's got to be the blood's got to be pumped up against gravity. So there's a significant amount of pressure that needs to be applied, a, a lot of force that needs to be applied by those thick muscular walls in order for the blood to pump through our whole bodies. Atria are more collecting chambers, and these are the ones at the top of the heart, and these are the ones into which the different veins will run. So pulmonary veins are coming from the lungs, and the vena cava are the ones that are coming from the rest of the body. So we have the superior vena cava, which is basically coming from the top part of the body, the head and the neck, and then the inferior vena cava, which is bringing the blood up from the lower parts of the body. And that's gonna drain into our right atria, into our right ventricle, and then we're going to pump through the pulmonary artery to the lungs. So that's a very important stage for oxygenation of the blood and also the removal of carbon dioxide. And then th back through the pulmonary vein into the left atria, into the left ventricle, and that very strong muscular pump which will pump blood through the rest of the body. Again, it's useful if you have a look at some of these at a micro level, because that's when you can see some of the differences between them. And I also suggest that you use a table to compare the different types of blood vessels. So the artery, for example, artery away. So the blood is taken away from the heart in the arteries. Because they're under high pressure, they have much thicker outer walls to withstand the pressure that's being applied by those compressions in the heart. They have a smaller lumen, which is the space within those tubes. And the arteries themselves are the ones you can often feel when we're taking a pulse. So that's where we can feel the blood pumping through those arteries. Veins are returning blood towards the heart. So the veins either from the lungs or from the rest of the body through the vena cava are going to bring the blood back towards the heart. They don't they aren't under as high a pressure, so therefore the outer walls are thinner. But the other problem is that particularly if there's blood in my toes, which hopefully there is, that blood's going to work its way all the way back up to my heart, and that's coming against gravity. And so one of the structures that we see in veins are these valves. So veins and valves, the two Vs, and the valves are there to try and limit the amount of uh, backwards flow that actually happens. Sometimes you can actually see pooling at these. They're the, they're the famous varicose veins. 
And that's basically some of these valves that are just capturing some of that blood. The lumen is slightly larger. You could imagine that with the thicker walls of the artery, there isn't as much space in the tube. With the veins, there's a little bit more space in the tube because the walls are not quite as thick. If we're talking macro level, we can't really see capillaries. They're just too small. We need to look at them under a microscope. And that's because they're very, very small. They're a single layer of cells. They help facilitate exchange, gas exchange, which we'll look at later but they're very, very small and not really one of the structures that we can see when we're talking about macro structures. It's possibly also worth just briefly touching on the lymphatic vessels. Now, lymph vessels are also part of the transport system. So there are capillaries and veins in the lymph vessels, but no arteries. So these are going to move fluid around through the body. Again, they will contain valves to prevent backflow, but in this case, what they're moving around is lymph and hence the part of the lymphatic system. It's a clear fluid, but it contains lymphocytes. And there are two important types of lymphocytes, the B cells and the T cells, very important in our immune system and something that we're going to be having a look at in a bit more detail in the HSC course. The lymph glands or the lymph nodes store the extra lymphocytes when the body is under attack. And this is one of the reasons why uh, your doctor will often feel for swollen glands if you go in and complain that you've got a bit of a cold or something like that, I'll be looking to see whether or not your immune system has kicked in and is actively fighting against the invasion of a pathogen. The lymph also transports digested fat and removes and destroys some toxic chemicals from our body. So it's a really good cleaning system as well as being involved in the fight against infectious disease. Thanks for watching.